CIA-backed movie. One thing you need to know about the United States, there is a congressional committee that supervised movie will never be released. On top of that, the CIA and the FBI, they pay movie studios to include content that is favorable to America's agenda. When you look at the first Black Panther, the hero of the movie wasn't Prince T'Challa. Rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. It was CIA agent Ross, the white man, who flew the plane back and actually served Zuri, <laughs> the, saved Zuri, the Panther's sister. How can the CIA agent be a hero in an African movie when the CIA is responsible for destabilizing most African countries responsible for the assassination of most African leaders. Who ordered the assassination of Patrice Lumumba? The CIA. Who provided intelligence to the apartheid government to help capture Nelson Mandela's and the other ANC leaders in exile? The CIA. Who uh, had uh, Maurice Bishop assassinated in Grenada? The CIA. So you mean to tell me the one governmental structure that was responsible for overthrowing and assassinating so many African leaders is now a hero in an African movie for African children? Complete propaganda. And as far as Wakanda Forever, the second movie, it was absolutely disgusting. I almost walked out. And you know why? Our children were so empowered with Black Panther 1. You come back for Black Panther 2, and you mean to tell me the Mexicans have the same vibranium as the Wakandans. The Mexicans got the same power as the Wakandans. So what's so special about the Wakandans if you're gonna take all their power and give it to the Mexicans? And when you watch the movie, the Mexicans kick our ass through the whole movie. I couldn't take my child to go and watch that. I'm not gonna take my child to go and watch that. Why would you put out a movie on a black superhero and allow his entire community to get destroyed by an army of Mexicans? I also think that that was a CIA fronted movie and I think the message there was to desensitize American Africans to the coming oppression and replacement of them by the Mexican immigrants. Right now in Chicago, our second largest black city, you know what's happening? Joe Biden in the U.S. government is bringing busloads, busloads of Hispanics into Chicago to use them to do what? Help push black people out gentrify black Chicago and also take over all the unused social services so black people can get nothing. Wakanda forever was a prelude of what's going to happen to black America over the next 20 years. Karis one calls the CIA criminals in action. And I call them the cocaine import agency because the CIA is the founders of the international drug trade. The reason why America invaded Afghanistan 9-11-2001 is because the Taliban burned the poppy seed. Afghanistan is the number one opium producing nation in the world. And do you know what Colin Powell, rest in peace, who at the time was Secretary of State, he gave the uh, Afghani government 10 to 20 US million dollars to replant the poppy seed. What does the American government care about poppy seed? They care about the dope. America, China, and Britain are the biggest drug dealers on the planet. You can sell drugs with their permission, but if you get caught selling drugs without their permission, they destroy you. Just go ask Freeway Ricky Ross. Yes. The official stance of a Pan-Africanist against our Mexican and other Hispanic brothers and sisters? We're not against them. We're not against any race. We wish the best to the Latino family. And of course, Latino Africans are our brothers and sisters, okay? So we don't see them any differently as we see anyone else. We wish the best to the Asian family, Caucasian family, Arab, Indian. We wish goodwill to all human groups, but our priority is to ourselves. And we will not allow any group, not Chinese, not Arab, not Indian, not European Jew, not Anglo-Saxon, to impede the progress of African people. So we're not against nobody else. Yeah. The problem is these other groups are against us often because nobody wants to help Africa, but everybody wants to loot Africa. True. You see, God set up the world in such a way that we have all the resources. Yeah. Nobody can live without Africa, but Africa don't need anybody else to survive. So that automatically means what? They have to come and take from Africa and they do it in such an exploitative way that we don't get anything out of the deal. So in essence, many of these groups become natural 
enemies of African people. Europeans are natural enemies of African people. Europe has almost nothing. They cannot survive without Africa. See, the vampire metaphor, mm -hmm. you know, the vampire is very popular in European uh, imagination because the European is a vampire. Blood what is a vampire? A blood-sucking demon. And what has the European been doing in Africa for the past 300 years? Sucking the mineral and economic blood out of black people. It's time to crucify the vampire. Your favorite president, Barack Obama. My favorite president would be President General of the UNIA ACL, the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Boom. My favorite prime minister, Patrice Lumumba of the Congo. Runner-up, Osajifo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Favorite Obama. revolutionary, John Jacques Dessalines. Runner-up, Nat Turner. Runner-up, Deedon Kamathi of the Kenyan Land and Freedom Army. No Barack Obama? Hell no. Why not? Sell out. He did nothing for African people. He put AFRICOM in Africa. Do you know that there's been about 12 coups in Africa over the past five years? And nearly every coup was in a country where Barack Obama built a U.S. military base. No coincidence. America doesn't believe in democracy. Britain doesn't believe in democracy. Amsterdam doesn't believe in democracy. Paris doesn't believe in democracy. They believe in domination. I don't care how many democratically elected presidents you get in Africa. If that democratically elected president doesn't carry out the agenda of the global white power structure, he will be overthrown whether he was put in office through a vote or not. The white man does not believe in democracy. It's only a weapon that they use to achieve their ends. And they have no problem disposing with their weapon of democracy when it doesn't serve their agenda. Jeez. I want to speak about your school, but before I mm -hmm. do, uh, again, on behalf of my audience, what's a snow bunny? A and snow bunny is a white one. black men stay away from snow bunny? First of all, as Pan-African, as we believe in self-determination, African independence, right? So that means every school needs to be built for and by black people. Every bank needs to be built for and by black people. Every hospital needs to be built for and by black people. Every community needs to be built for and by black people. Every family needs to be built for and by black family. There's more African women on the planet than any other population. There's no other population that has more of itself than black women. So what excuse do I have dating outside of my race with so many African women? Now let's add to that the oppressive history that we've had with the European. These people have enslaved us. They have robbed us. They have colonized us. They have neo-colonized us. They've created all types of biological weapons from AIDS to Ebola to West Nile to COVID. Every time we look up, they're coming up with a new, a new scheme to exterminate African people. And you mean to tell me that white people have done all this to me and to my race, and I'm going to turn around and choose a white woman to carry my child? Do you know how sick that is? Why do I want to put my melanated seed in the belly of a devil? Why? It makes no sense. Black men date out their race more than all other men put together. You know why? Racial inferiority. We don't think we're as good as the white man, so we need the white woman in order for us to feel an artificial sense of equality. It is self-hatred to the 20th power. I'm not against white women, but I support black women. And in my support of black women, I cannot condone interracial dating. But let's look at the economics. Take the romance out. Take the emotion out. Let's look at the economics. Marriage is a business contract. Women, on average, live longer than men. So if I marry a white woman and I die prematurely, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. I die prematurely, rest in peace, Marvelous, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. That white woman is not going to take any of the wealth that I built as a black man and give it to the black community so we can help regenerate ourselves. She's going to keep that money for herself, and all that black money will go back into the hands of white society. Interracial marriage is economic betrayal. Are there any good white people in the world? There may be, but it doesn't matter. And you know why? No matter how good an individual white person may be, they have an obligation to look out for the best interests of the white race. Therefore, no matter how well-meaning they may be, at the end of the day, they're going to close ranks with their own people. Every white person has an obligation to promote and protect white privilege. If there were so many good white people in the world, as so many black multiculturalists claim, why is apartheid still in effect? 
Why do you have 200,000 homeless black people in South Africa? Why are there 3,000 South Africans who own more than the bottom 32 million of South Africa? Why has the income equality in South Africa gotten worse since April 27th of 1994? If you got all these good white people, we should see some structural evidence of their good deeds. Show me the good deeds of those good demons, and I'll change my mind. Frederick, Frederick Douglass, Marcus, Marcus Garvey mm -hmm. Institution. One of the clips that trended recently was you speaking about black contractors that let you down. Yes. And you had to go to other races to complete the building of the school. Yes. May you please speak on that? Absolutely. And this is a reality for black people everywhere. Yeah. In South Africa, in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Jamaica, in Guadeloupe, where I'll be next week, in Ethiopia, where I'll be tomorrow. We have been so indoctrinated by the white power structure to not respect African life, that many of us have a difficult time doing right by our own people. It's the post-traumatic slavery disease, the post-traumatic apartheid disease, you see. Mm -hmm. But guess what? I can't stop. Yes, I've been scammed by black contractors. I've been ripped off by black contractors. No black contractor has finished the work that we ever paid them to do, true. But guess what? I'm not giving up on my people. So when the Marcus Garvey Elementary School is done renovation at the end of the month, guess what? We have to go across the street and renovate our second school, the Frederick Douglass High School. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go right back to the black community and do it all over again and see if I can find some black people who will do right by us this time. Why? Why not just stay with the white folks? Mm -hmm. They got it done right. You know why? Because we can't win if we don't learn how to work with each other. We can't win if we don't learn how to trust each other. People often ask me, they say, Dr. Umar, why don't you accept some white money for your school? You could have been had your school up years ago. Why you want to do this Marcus Garvey self-determination black power thing? You know why? If white people help me get my school up, not the contractors, because that's fee for service, they're being paid. But if white people fund the building of the school, when the school opens, is that really a black school? Yeah. Can we really claim that as a black accomplishment? No because white people were still in the shadows, guiding and directing your success. No victory for African people is a victory if it includes outside help. I've heard you speak about this, but the plan to build more of these institutions- All over the diaspora. In particular for South Africa and the African continent. Get me a school in South Africa, we'll have the school. Absolutely. I need one of these buildings, I like more than one. Give me one in the Cape, Give me one in Pretoria, give me one in Soweto, give me one in Joburg, give me one in Kailisha, give me one in KwaZulu Natal, and let us implement education for our children. Because until you change yeah. the minds of African people, you change nothing else. Yeah. We keep overlooking that. Why we don't have good leadership, we're not training our children to be good leaders. Why we don't have strong black men the way we used to. We're not training them how to be men. If you want a different African, you need a different educational system. Yeah. Your thoughts around military training for the African child? Oh, I totally support it. We're going to have military training as well. Because we live in a very hostile world that is very anti-African. Although we are the largest family on the planet, the planet is very much decidedly anti-African. So we have to be ready at all times to defend our men, our women, our, ch our children. I do not believe in violence, but I understand violence becomes necessary at times. And as black men, we have a responsibility to defend our community. We must always be ready for war and always be ready for revolution. Got a few more questions. Sure. Before we, we still have time. We still have time. Yes. We still have time. Thank you. A very sensitive topic is the topic of black men and black fathers and black women's infertility. I'd like you to please touch on that and then I have a follow-up question to that based on, on something you've said before, which I've already struggled to find since. Mm -hmm. But your thoughts around the black father not even being in the home mm -hmm. and not being present in their child's life and the agenda to get in particular African women in fertile? Absolutely. Number one, we cannot talk about black men being in the home and being effective fathers if we don't have help black men address the economic crisis that they face. 
the reason South Africa's jails are filled with black men. America's jails are filled with black men. Jamaica's jails, Haiti's jails, Brazil's jails are filled with black men is because they have to break the law in order to take care of their family. So the economy is largely responsible for the disintegration of the traditional black family. The, a, a, a man's job is to protect and to provide. What are we doing to help them provide? I just heard yesterday that we got young black men in South Africa, university degree, graduate degree, yeah. medical degree, can't get a job. 100%. Why would I want to build a family that I'm not able to take care of? The reason we don't see more black women get married is because men don't feel confident that they'll be able to care for that woman and child. We have to look at the self-esteem of a man, the self-image of a man. Why is suicide so high for black men in South Africa? So high for black men in the United States? Because so many of us are being crushed by lack of economic opportunity, the stress of not being able to fulfill our God-given responsibilities as a man that we just take our own lives. So empowering